If you've watched the first video in the series, you would understand what file structure is on the DVD. Now, we're going to go to the second part of the tutorial. How to actually work with the DVD file. Now, I don't... I'm not going to tell you how to copy the DVD onto your hard drive so you can work with it. Because, well, that's really illegal, but I'm going to tell you what to do after you've got the DVD files on your hard drive. What we have in front of us here is a program called Cinematize. This program here, I'll just click on it, see, Cinematize, yay, lovely program. It's released by Mirazon. They're a company in America, and basically they've made this lovely little program that allows you to convert a DVD file back to a video stream file, as in MPEG, QuickTime, AVI, the whole kit and caboodle. And if you've ever tried editing raw DV files, you will understand the pain that you go through to work with a DVD file. So, I'm going to take it quickly. What we're going to do here is we're going to load up a video file. So we're going to go to a video file that we, we got on here earlier. This is the trailer from the movie El Mariachi. So we're going to just select all the files that we've got. Now, it is important that you have the IFO file and the BUB file as long as well as the VOB files. You will see this in a moment why it's so important. That comes the fact that you won't work without the IFO and BUB file. But that's beside the point. Drag and drop. Now here we've got the video TS directory. Let me just minimize that. That's video title set. So it's got the second video title set, the file size, and once we've selected it we can click this button. Don't forget, on the left-hand side, right here, you can also add more files to the list. So, we've selected our VOTS, we're going to put next. Now, it's reading the DVD data from the IFO file, and actually the IFO file is telling the disk, telling the program, what's in these VO files and how to work with it. So, we've got our first page here. Now, since we want to work with the trailer, this is what's already on the video file here, see? You have a nice lovely trailer. So, okay, well, let's just say what we want isn't on that one. Go to title. Now, the titles are the individual programs on this section. In this section, the extras disc, the extra section of um, El Mariachi, it's actually got three different areas. You've got the trailer, which is title one, the, the uh, what was it? Bedhead on number two. Now, it always takes a while to load if there's n chapter stops because what it's doing is look at the video file and going, right, there's a chapter stop here, here, and here. And it's loading up just that one chapter stop. As you notice on the left hand side, you've got chap start point and end point. Come to those in a few seconds. See, that's bedhead. And on VTS Title 3 should be his other short film that was also released with El Mariachi, the DVD in Australia. Waiting, waiting. Again, that's the reason why it takes a while because it's going up to chapter one. Is his other one, which was a ten minute film school. I apologize, I was wrong there. Since that was well a little bit longer than ten minutes, so you can really um, get him on that. But anyway, what we want is on Title 1. So, we go back to Title 1. Now, to mark your in and out points, click on Start Point, and just scroll to where you want the in point to be. So, we want it to start here, and end point, we can just move it anywhere. Notice, however, you can't move the end point before the start point, which is a good thing, otherwise all matters of badness will happen. So we're going to mark the out point. We don't want that much, we're going to do a demo. So we want the out point to be out here. You can also use these up and down arrows to have final control over your out point. So now we've selected the segment we want, now we have to tell it how it's going to save it. So click on the video title. Now you have a series of options. You can either say vi main video stream, no video stream, or if you had the other streams, like the angles, you can also choose it there as well. 
So we want to choose the decoding method. Let's just say we are going to encode this to QuickTime. So click on QuickTime. We want to decode it automatically. We're going to output the DVC PAL, normal quality output, and aspect ratio adjustments. We also have other formats of um, decoding as well. Well, we've got the QuickTime. We've also got another two, the elementary stream, which is basically unconverted video data stream. So basically, the disk, it's basically ripped directly out from the disk and demultiplexed. So you're basically ripping it directly, no loss in quality, no conversion. But remember, it's MPEG file. It's very hard to work with. Then you've got the second one, which is MPEG2 program stream, which is right here. Basically, that's the unconverted format straight from the DVD as well. But the output video data file packet, we packetize the elemental stream. And basically, it's basically split. It's a little bit better, but not by much. But we're going to work to QuickTime, so we're going to decode to QuickTime. Everything else there should be straight. And since we're working on a video file, you can we want to audit, get the audio as well. Decode to WAV. You can choose your other formats as there as well. We want to do WAV. We want to downmix that audio from the two channel five eight. It gives you the option to downmix any audio from what it is to two channels, which is very good you're working with a video, with a TV show or anything like that where you don't have the opportunity for 5.1 normal dynamic range we don't want to rip the subtitles but if you did we could rip them here and we could rip them out as that as well but I digress so then we've got output now if you're working on individual files like maybe four five or six of them chapters you need to have the option of basically splitting that file up into certain segments as in chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 chapter 5 or we can save all chapters 1 to 5 into as one big file. Personally, I would suggest if you're going to be doing a video editing, you just get the bits that you need. So, we're going to save separate segments, save the QuickTime files that are self contained, and we're going to save them as a QuickTime file. So, we're going to do all that. Press Extract Data. Now, as you would see on the thing, it will give us the location of where we're just going to save. At the moment, we're going to save it in the, on the desktop in a folder called Example 1. So as we're doing that, let's basically scan the MPEG video. And it's basically extracting the video files from there, compressing it, and it's going to let us know what the file is. Synchronizing the video, command data quick time format. And that little beep tells us it's done. So if you look at an example, once it loads up, come on. And there's your example file there. DVD movie segment or MOV. We're going to double click that and it's going to open up in a few seconds. And there you have it, the QuickTime video file of the stream that was on the DVD. Now it may not be playing in full frame rate on what you see, but here it's playing full frame rate beautiful and I can import that QuickTime movie file into any video editing program I need. I'll we'll explain more about Cam, uh, not Camtasia, um, Cinematize in, this, in another one. There's a few more things that you'll probably would like to know about it. But that's the basics of it. Cinematize 2, done by Murizen. I'll put a link to their website in the notes of this. Of this. So, however this program does does cost money. I bought it myself. I think it's well worth buying because you never really know what you may need it for. And it's better to have this tool than not have this tool. Alright, next time I will show you and how what the other little couple more little tricks and tri tips this program has for you.